Example HT, heat transfer 1B. So this is a continuation of the previous HT1A. Write an explicit function for the temperature of the coolant TP as a function of cooling time in general terms. What does general terms mean? It means leave U, A, C, P, all those as letters. Find this function and draw the graph of TP for the substance in the previous problem, HT1, that shows TP as a function of cooling of the cooling time needed to cool the substance from 140 degrees to 60 degrees. So what is this? That we start just like we did before. We have our differential equation, which we solved, as you recall. And now the idea is that instead of TE being a fixed one hour for it to be cooled to 60 degrees, and that's how we determine TP of like TE equal to one, we're going to allow the times to change before it gets to be 60 degrees. So we're looking kind of like for a table of values. We had TE and we calculated TP. Remember, big TE is 60, that's this. And we found that when it was one hour, we needed 13.45 degrees Celsius. Now we would expect that if we had two hours to cool off the stuff, we could use a warmer coolant. So it would be hotter than this, but of course always cooler than 60 degrees. So what we wanna do is kind of find a way to create this table and graph it here. So what is the question? How does TP change if TE changes? That's what we're looking for. And so it's a little bit easier to solve this if we have an explicit function. So what we really wanna do is solve this for TP so that we can put in different values. So we have uh, on this side minus TP, and then when we put that on that side, it'll be plus TP times E to the minus UA over MCP times T. And then this goes on that side, so it's minus T plus T zero times E to the minus UA MCP over T. So we'll divide out TP, and on the bottom, what do we get here? Let's reverse the signs so that they're positive, so this part comes first. Minus one, that's this part here. And again, we'll reverse the signs here, so that's T is zero, E to the minus UA over MCP times T minus T. Now, this is our T E. So this is our explicit function for TP and the answer to the first part of the problem. So now we want to put in our numbers and write up these some of these values and graph it. So you may recall that we had minus UA over MCP equals minus 1 over 3000 600 seconds. Now, just so we don't have big numbers on our x-axis, we're going to move into hours. You can certainly leave it in seconds. Um, so, but this is such a nice number, minus 1 over 1 hour. So this is minus 1 times 1 over an hour, which means that we will be putting minus 1 here and using t in hours. So what do we get? We get tp equals what was T0? 140. E minus UA is minus 1, so minus T. T is now an hour, so the hours cancel. Minus 60 over E to the minus T minus 1. And, and it probably would be an excellent idea to see if we substitute 1, whether we get 13.45 to check this before continuing. And indeed, it does work. So let us try how, what would it be if we put in two for two hours here? Get our calculator. That was where we checked there. So now we want, so we have two plus minus inverse ln. We're going to need that in the bottom. So let's put that in our memory. Times 140 
equals minus 60. So our numerator is minus 41, and then we're going to divide it, and we'll put a parenthesis there so we get that. And we need memory recall minus 1 and the parenthesis equals 47.48 or 47.5 degrees. That makes perfect sense. Okay, 47.5. Let's do one more for three hours. So now we need three plus minus inverse ln. Put that in our memory and multiply that times 140 equals minus 60 equals, I'm a big equals hitter, so minus 53 divided by parenthesis memory recall minus 1 Hit the other parenthesis equals, and that makes even more sense. If three hours, we can use an even warmer coolant, right? Because we have more time to cool. 55.8 for three hours. So for three hours, we have 55.8 degrees. So let's kind of graph that data and see what we get. Okay, so here we have our function, and here we have our data. And let's think about what we would write. So what is this axis? This is the TE. How much time am I allowing myself to cool? And it goes to three hours on our scale. So we have one and two here, let's say, hours. And then what would be the Y axis? It would be TP for sure, right? And what's the maximum the TP could get to be? Well, TP can't get to be more than 60 or it ain't cooling nothing, right? 60 degrees Celsius. So what do we know? Let's see, let's write this as 30 and this is like then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So these are on tens. So these are on tens. So this is 20 degrees and 40 degrees. And what we need to know is one hour is 13 degrees and two hours is 47 degrees and three hours is 55 degrees. Let's get an asymptote up here at 60. There it is. And so we can see that this part of the function goes like this. As we get longer and longer, we can get closer to 60 degrees. Here's a question. How does this go? Well, we could pick up half an hour here, 0.5 hour, and get our calculator. So 0.5 plus minus inverse ln, put that in our memory, times 140 equals minus 60 equals, ooh, notice that's positive. That means we're going to be getting a negative number for TP. Let's see, divided by parenthesis, memory recall, minus 1, parenthesis, equals minus 63.3 degrees. So this is minus 63.3 degrees. So this drops very sharply. And of course, continues down here if that's possible. And we have to get this far down by half an hour off our image here for that minus 63. So anyway, this is the graph of TP as a function of the cooling time, as required by the second part of the problem. And we are done.